Gun violence is undoubtedly a public health issue. It is the cause of not only thousands of deaths every year, but also thousands upon thousands of injuries. Large-scale interventions could help save lives. It's about bringing together governments and public health leaders and clinicians to fight the violence created by guns in our country. We also want to address gun violence as a whole. Communities are affected by gun violence and we want to think collectively with them about solutions that can help them support their communities in meaningful ways. The Dickey Amendment existed from the early 90s up through recently, and, and that essentially blocked federal funding of gun violence research. And as a result, we have a generation where essentially very little gun violence research happened. We also have a lot of people that are very invested in that, and being a gun owner is part of their identity in a lot of senses, right? So we can't just rip that away. So how do we bridge this together so we can actually start talking about these things and making progress, moving that needle? The Rutgers School of Public Health is based on two really important tenets, social justice and health equity, advancing the health and well-being of the people and the populations of New Jersey, of the country, and of the world. One of the things that sets the New Jersey Gun Violence Research Center apart is that we are one of only a few uh, state-funded gun violence research centers in the country that shows that we have a local government willing to invest in this issue as a, a matter of principle. We're driven by the need of data from our organizers on the ground who are saying that we need federal funding, that we need, uh, you know, violence-based interruption programs. And the only way they can advocate for them is with the data. Rutgers Gun Violence Research Center does this perfectly because we go closest to the people who are closest to the problem. In 2020, we saw a surge in gun violence rates, both in terms of gun deaths and in non-fatal shootings. And so communities across the country have been impacted by gun violence more so than they typically are. The underlying reality is that a lot of the things that, that leave communities prone to gun violence, so a lack of opportunity, a lack of financial investment, um, have been made worse uh, during the pandemic. Black and brown people experience homicide 10 times more than their white counterparts. There's an economic impact that we all bear when someone is shot collectively. Um, the cost of gun violence in this country is in the hundreds of millions. Somebody pays that cost. My research actually focuses on intimate partner violence. A victim can be abused by their partner, and then when uh, an abuser actually has uh, access to a firearm, that victim is five times more likely to be killed by their abuser. Firearm suicide accounts for about 25,000 deaths in the United States every year alone. So suicide by that one method is a top 10 cause of death in the United States. And impacts specific communities disproportionately. We're talking men, we're talking older adults, we're talking service members and veterans. No matter how many gun sense packages that the governor, the communities around us, the states around us don't have those levels of gun safety laws. And so what ends up happening is, is guns are smuggled in on the iron highway, on the iron pipeline. What the Gun Violence Research Center is composed of is folks like myself, folks who are born and bred in New Jersey, Right, who understand the communities that we're advocating in and first and foremost are going to the people who are closest to the problem because we know they're closest to the solution. As a research center, of course, we want to fund and conduct cutting edge research on all forms of gun violence. That's a given. But one of the things that I think is different about us is that we're putting equal weight behind the notion of communicating about the science of gun violence prevention. We want to make it our mission to make this information accessible, freely accessible, widely available to the communities most impacted by gun violence. Realistically, I can have all the stats in the world that tell you that firearms are dangerous. It doesn't matter if I don't go out and figure out how I can talk to a firearm owner about storing his gun safely. A huge thing that we've worked on is disseminating this information. How do we actually take what we know and actually get it in the hands of the people who need that information? We want to establish what we call equal partnerships with community partners so that they feel as though they are an integral part of the research that we're doing. We're thinking of community partners as co-researchers with academics. They are in that process with us from the beginning of the research to the end when we're actually disseminating finding 
We're looking for ways in which we can translate this research in meaningful ways to community members and communities so that they can use the research to then think about ways that we can bring about um, social change. People in community have always been responsible and taken responsibility for their public safety and the issues in their community. So community um, intervention programs, violence interruption programs. Our research has to work with individuals who are already on the ground as community partners, but in a way that recognizes the genius that's already there in those communities.